Hello everyone and welcome to Nanalisa Dawn. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury and we have a few exhibition replays that are by request today. First off from Bum Crumbs against Noel King. Bum Crumbs has requested it. <sighs> I'll just go with Crumbs. Crumbs requested it. So we actually that sounds worse somehow. Well, I'm going with that. So, we have a match between Noel King and Crumbs on Adansonia. No one can go in for the Ampot Factory, no surprises there, and Crumbs are going for the Cloaky Factory, which apparently they're saying is a factory they find very comfortable, and I can't say I blame them. It's definitely a factory that has a lot of really straightforward units early on. The Glaive is a kind of obvious raider, the Reaver provides a reasonably strong riot unit that's able to deal with Glaives no problem, and really able to deal with a lot of situations, and the Ronin is sort of the stock standard skirmisher. Like, the Cloaky Bot Factory, to a great extent, is kind of the prototypical factory of each role. Most other factories usually deviate in some way from the, at least one of those roles. But not Cloaky, so I can totally understand the, the, the sentiment there. Anyway, Noel King going for the Ambot Factory, which is a very clear deviation in that the Ducks kind of operate as both Raiders and almost Riots, and almost not quite Skirms. Like, they kind of blend those three roles together in a weird way. Definitely Raiders by their HP, but they are they have the splash damage, and it's just kind of weird. So yeah, there, that's the thing. There's a factory that has very weird, very atypical roles, whereas the Klogobot factory, very much the the def the definition of the typical roles in 0k. So if you wanted to learn how to play the games, Klogobot factory is usually a good starting point. Anyway, Crumb's also going for a very quick expansion. Being very aggressive with that, whereas Noel King, much more focused on defense, getting a lot of ducks up, and looks like they are in fact going for the ducks as an assault force, this will probably end up with everyone losing their armies. I mean, two ducks versus four glaives with low to support, that's an even fight. Oh, but never mind the glaives moving out, that actually is going to be in favor of Noel King either way. If Crumbs' glaives meet up with Noel King's ducks before the ducks get to the lotus, then, well, the ducks are... and the glaives are going to trade. And otherwise, the ducks could very well actually knock down the lotus. Not to mention the third duck going around the side. So actually, these glaives are in a bit of a bad spot. Actually, no, these glaives are fine. The duck will one-shot one of the glaives. The remaining three glaives should kill the duck. So, barring some really sick micro, and looks like, actually, mostly Crumbs is just trying to avoid the duck entirely. Fortunately, not an option, but fortunately for them, they still had two glaives left to be able to deal with the duck. On the other hand, the two ducks coming into Noel King's base, like I said before, they are basically going to be torn apart. They will be able to take care of two glaives at most. Oh, never mind. They don't have splash damage anymore. My bad! That's good, though. Ducks did not need that. So at any rate, Crumbs, like I said, they've got a pretty secure expansion going on here. They have a very secure main base going on. Noel King, on the other hand, kind of behind in that front. They do have a slightly safer top ground, or high ground expansion right here, which is not what Crumbs has gone for. In a sense, it's safer because it is still on the higher ground. You can still defend it. It doesn't have as easy of a path around, especially against Amphib, actually. Cloakie doesn't have that option, but Amphib does. But the expansion here is a bit closer to the base. Or at least feels closer. The same... Same Y coordinate. I mean, that's something. Actually, no. That's the Z coordinate. Y is vertical. Whatever. The point is the same height. But, yeah, Bumcrum's able to get a little bit of scouting going on here. Noel King, however, at least with these ducks, they are able to secure what they have. It's just they aren't able to get a whole lot more right now, which doesn't really surprise me. Ducks aren't particularly fast. So using them as a defense for the conches, the conches are trying to expand, isn't likely to be a thing to happen. On the other end, though, the conch over here is actually under potentially some threat. But no, Noel King's not going for it. They aren't even approaching that at all. Going around the back instead, trying to find what they can, and this is not going to work. Unless they're really clever, but I'm pretty sure... No, it's going to be the, the pickets coming in here. Or actually, no, this picket might be blocked. No, not not enough. I was, I was thinking maybe the picket would be blocked by the by the solar collector. It wouldn't be able to see through, but no, it is in fact tall enough. That's not a problem. At this point, Bumcrum's a bit surprised they aren't actually switching over to Reavers, or Reaver Ronin. Like, the Glaives aren't going to find a whole lot of purchase with the with the pickets in the base. That, that just stops it flat. Like, there's no way you're getting through that, because pickets just don't. Oh, hi, Danron. Anyway, pickets... One of them will kill a glaive and a half. So, at this point, there's not a whole lot that, that crumbs can do. I mean, basically, they'll have to send at least four glaive... No, at least, yeah, four and a half glaives over. Well, four full health, one half health. Glaive, at least that many, in order to get through the pickets, burn all their missiles, and then be able to deal some damage. 
Now, granted, they do have that many, but on top of the fact that there's also a dozen... Oh, is there still a dozen ducks? Ooh, a dozen ducks and three archers. So, way more than I thought before. So, yeah, there's, there's good stuff here. This is not going to be going easily. Mind you, most of the ducks are in the assault path, getting rid of the expansion over the northwest. This is exactly what I was talking about. This expansion is not necessarily as safe, and it certainly wasn't put with enough security in there. The glaive's coming in here to try to get revenge, which they should be successful. The ducks actually are on a bit of a suicide mission here. There's no easy way they're going to be able to get out of here without the glaives killing them all. I mean, they're going to try. They're not going to do a fine job of it. No, oh, surprisingly... Wait, what? Did I... No, that can't be right. Speed 84 compared to 115. Ow. Oh, I see. The glaives... Were they going with the Ronin? Were they... They were... Don't tell me they were trying to match speed with the Ronin. I mean, I get the logic, but it just isn't going to work. It just led to a bunch of dead glaives. At this point, Knoll King's got a really nice position. They've gotten rid of Kremlin's expansion. They themselves have expanded considerably in the meantime. And they're able to just pretty much keep Crumbs from expanding anywhere, from doing anything. Not to mention the fact that they got a nice flank going. If it weren't for the fact that Crumbs never expanded over the northeast, it would actually be a lot scarier. But as it is, Crumbs is in an okay position. Not in a great position, but they're not dead yet. In fact, going for a counterattack themselves, they should be able to find loads of mileage here. These glaives... Oh, they've got to be detected. There's got to be something showing them... No. Seriously? No radar whatsoever? Noel King has no radar at all. So Bomb Crumbs should be able to get in here and basically wipe out this entire expansion. Completely unchecked. I mean, there's all these ducks going around the back, and there's a pretty scary flank coming into... Well, okay. Not necessarily a flank. The Fjord is going to stop most of that flank. But they can still get in around the side, around the bottom. So it's a pretty scary army coming in from Noel King. But at the same time, they, they're going to have to retreat. Like, Crumbs... I don't think Noel King quite realizes, but Crumbs has got a very large army of glaives here. Like... 14 glaives with no defense. That is not nothing. That is going to wipe out basically everything here. Possibly wipe out this section as well. Yeah, one duck. It's not going to be able to not going to be able to secure this expansion over to the north. So that's not happening. Same time though, the duck counterattack coming in here, and unfortunately Reaver's not really in position. The Ronin doing their job. Glaives. I mean, the glaives are just going to die. But at this point, this counterattack might actually be might actually work, and it's clearly that's Noel King's strategy here. Just ignore the fact that there's glaives in their base, let the ducks that are streaming in deal with it, let the pickets deal with it, and at the same time, destroy everything Crumbs has, because all Crumbs has is the Reavers, but the Reavers are doing their job! They are managed to get close enough, they're actually managing to get the damage in there, and the Ronin on top that has stopped the archers. At this point, the attack has been completely thwarted, and Crumbs, on the other hand, able to get rid of six metal extractors and two conches for the cost of a dozen glaives. Not a bad trade. So now they're even. Noel King going in with another force, but this is a suicide attack. I really kind of wish Noel King would retreat from here, because they have no reason to attack with this. They aren't going to find anything but a bunch of death and metal donation to their opponent. And unfortunately, they're, well, they're going for it. So, valiant, but pointless at this point. And like I said, I kind of wish they'd hold back. You know, regroup their forces, make sure they got a larger army to push with. However, they do have a gunship line being built up. Not sure what the plan is there. Nothing has been shown, but my guess is that they're going to be going in for a bunch of harpies. Harpies one-shot glaives. Pretty easy to get through with them. And also, they can do a lot of hit-and-run attacks. Mind you, there aren't a whole lot of static defenses here. There's three lotuses. Banshees would have no problem. Sorry, locusts would have no problem with that. So I could very well see that happening. Although, to be fair, this is gold-level play. We could potentially see a crow. At plus 25 metal. I know, I know. It's kind of odd if we saw that. And I don't expect to see that, but it could happen. Granted, if that would have happened, we would also see a grizzly. So the way that Noel King is playing, I expect we will see harpies. Or locusts. Or possibly gnats. I wouldn't recommend gnats, but we could see gnats. I I think harpies, locusts. As for the, actual, the rest of the forces here, I mean, Noel King, they can rebuild somewhat. These Ronin aren't too much of a threat. But they are clearly scared. I mean, Conscious is getting in there, getting the pickets up. Which, I mean, I understand why early on, at this stage in the game, pickets become a lot less useful. I said before, they kill a glaive and a half. This is more than one and a half glaives. At this point, Lotus or Stardust, like, against glaive, Stardust is the better option. By far. Picket is great at the first minute of the game, just to make sure that an early glaive rush can't kill you. Afterwards, if you want to stop glaives, go for Stardust. If you want to stop basically everything else, Lotuses are a decent bet. Stingers are quite expensive, but they 
they do work. They're just really expensive. Like one stinger with a few lotuses supporting them. That's oftentimes a thing that's used at the center of the map or very important strategic locations. Could see that. Also, Locust! Locust is the answer. Not a bad answer. Like I said, that's there's not a whole lot of static defense to stop that, so it could be done. On the other end, Stinger is not like I was talking about right here. This is exactly what I was talking about. Stinger supported by Lotus. That's gonna be a hard thing to get through. The Locusts might be able to stop it, but Bumcrumbs has spotted the Locust, so Anti-Air is on the way. No doubt about it. I mean, once they realize, oh, hey, we might want to deal with them gunships. Or maybe not. Maybe they're actually being kind of conservative about that, waiting until there's more gunships. I I mean, I could see that. At this point, they're able to stop Locusts, no problem, if the Locusts get to the army. Like, if the Locusts get to the base, it's fine. If the Locusts get to the army, it's not. That's why my first guess was Harpy. Because a Harpy doesn't have to worry about getting pinned down by a bunch of Reavers and torn to pieces. They can just fly by, fire up a few missiles, and keep going. Yeah, but, but Crumbs is on that. They have the Thresher. Ready to go. So their base is reasonably well protected, especially against something like a few Locusts. Although, Locusts and Nimbus. Nimbus is another one, actually, that Thresher's really good against. So, good call there. Like, Thresher range does actually outrange that of the Nimbus. But, oops, not what I wanted. Okay, hang on. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, the range of the Nimbus is 600. Range of the Thresher, 1,000. The Nimbus cannot really do anything to the Thresher. So, unfortunately, Chromes' approach is not going to be all that productive against most of the base. Especially the parts that are really valuable. The factory and so forth. The outer expansions, sure. And getting rid of the force that's come in the backyard here... Yeah, okay, fair enough. Otherwise, no. I mean, the one thing is that Null King is going to be able to block everything off from this small little fjord area. Because the problem is that this our, this force has to go back around. They cannot go over. I mean, unless they brought some conjurers with them, no force can, really. You have to terraform your way in. Although, I'd love to see someone actually do that on this map. Like, just make a small terraform bridge along here. It'd be kind of neat. I realize people don't use terraform that often, but in a situation like this, it would actually be really useful. I don't think Nolking would have expected that, and then Crumbs would have been able to just go past all these archers rather than losing their entire force to them. And then go into the backyard of the base and just rip everything apart. That would have been game. I mean, it would have been a really awkward strategy that no one's ever used. I'm not sure the exact timings or resources on that one, but it would have been amazing. So, I don't know. It's a suggestion. I think it's a ridiculous suggestion, but yeah, it might work. Actually, what is the... Oops, not one. What is the cost of that? Are you like... No, oh, it doesn't say. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I don't know what the cost is. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't really show the cost when you're setting up terraforming. So. Perhaps it's too expensive. I'm not sure. I don't think it would be. Especially not compared to losing your entire army like that. I don't know. Just a suggestion. And I probably will forget to do it if I'm ever in a situation like that myself. It's not something you see very often. At any rate, though, Crumbs does have... They have a large enough army, they don't really need to care. They've got double the economy of Null King. So at this point, Null King going in for overdrive. Just trying to do what they can with the base they have. I mean, they've lost a bunch of their product or lost a bunch of their economy over the western side of the map. Conch is going to rebuild that, so that's what I like to see. I always like to see that. I always say that is the thing that makes the difference between a good player and a great player, is great players will rebuild things. They won't let an area they had that they still have reasonable control over get completely barren when they've been harassed once. And that is exactly what Nolking's doing. They're making sure to rebuild that. And that's also what Crumbs has done as well. And actually, expanding beyond that too. So, nicely done there. Of course, the one downside for Nolking is the southeast is not under their control. Crumbs still has a reasonably strong contingent of forces there. I don't expect it'll survive through the... Well, no, through the Ducks Archers, and especially the Nimbus. Now, this force is over. Which is why I'm kind of surprised we didn't see a whole lot of mobile anti-air yet. I mean, there is a bit... But not much. I mean, there's only... How much is there? There's two! There are two gremlins! One of which is currently under production. There's actually only one gremlin. Yeah, that's not ideal. But hey. At the very least, it did force Nolking to lose quite a few forces. Actually, is this going to work? No, it's not going to work. The Nimbus is helping a bit, but these Reavers are still succeeding at getting through these archers. Like, Nolking's thrown away, thrown away a bunch of forces. Granted, this is still inside of their base, and the Nimbus should be able to clean this up. So the reclaim should go to Nolking, and as a result, they should have some options to get back in this game. But that has got to hurt. 
He still lost a huge army, and there's another army coming in from Crumbs over to the north. So as much as Null King was able to survive that assault, I don't think they've got another one in them. I mean, if they send some Conch out to reclaim, they've maybe got a chance, but I just don't see it. Not in the time they have, at least. Like I said, if they get... Maybe if they get some reclaim going, they might be able to, in the time available, rebuild something that allows them to hold off this force long enough to be able to then rebuild a larger force to be able to stay in this game. I just kind of don't see that. I don't know, maybe I'm being cynical. I just feel like there's just too much that Crumbs has going for them. Rather surprisingly, Crumbs hasn't really built a whole lot beyond just a bunch of cloaking units. I mentioned before, that is their comfort zone. They do want to just build cloaking units. They want to really get good at the cloaking bot factory, and I do not blame them whatsoever. I have also been in that situation. I'm still kind of in the situation. I still really like to use the cloaking factory. Just if I'm not really sure what to do, or feel like, you oh, know, it's kind of even terrain, not really sure what to play. So I totally get it. A little surprised there isn't more, but again, Crumbs is a newer player, so they are still getting used to all the factories. And there's a lot of factories to get used to, so that is fair. But Noel King, are they reclaiming? Yes, they are. No, they're they're not reclaiming. They're... That's a shame. 1,500 metal worth of reclaim, but they might get that. They're building up the metal extractors first. I don't agree with that, but... Eh, it's not a bad idea. It's not the best idea, but it's not a bad idea. Like, at the very least, no. Regain some control over the area, or at least regain some economy out of the area. Crumbs isn't really expanding much either, and honestly... Sorry, reclaiming much either, and honestly, they're kind of low on production. I mean... They have been accessing for some time. Like if you look at the... Oh, come on. Look at the graphs for this. Because, of course, it wouldn't be a replay cast without the graphs. No King's success is about half as much. And actually, in terms of army value... Okay, Crumbs is ahead considerably. 2,000 metal. In terms of metal used, however, they're fairly even. Like, No King has mostly been using their... Oh, actually, wait. What's the defense? Ah, because Crumbs has been using a lot of it on their defense. Makes sense. But Noel King has a reasonably strong defense right now, and, again, they haven't been excessing. Their production has been pretty much perfect for what they need. So the only thing that I could see them, like I said, the only real thing from here is just add some reclaim. But even now, I can kind of see why they wouldn't without adding in a caretaker or two. Like, their commander is, what, level 2, 12 metal per second? Yeah, overall, they got 42 metal per second to work with. So, reclaim would be a wise idea, but that adds 7.5 metal per second. They would excess pretty quickly. So I would instead recommend building a couple of caretakers and then building up some reclaim. But we'll see. I mean, at this point, they're actually not too far behind crumbs when it comes to their economy. They are a bit behind when it comes to army value, but they also have all the defenses exactly where they need to be. I mean, the five nemesis here, that is pretty much the entire defensive line for Null King right now. And how many gremlins does Crumb have? They've got... 13. Yeah, this is actually an even fight. I mean, the nimbus... The Nimbus should be able to spot the, the Gremlins in time. The Gremlins are not on hold fire, so this is going to be revealed very quickly. Let's fly over here and... Oh, never mind. Never mind, they're totally on hold fire. Good job, you! Put it on hold fire. Oh! Brilliant! Oh, I wish you could rewind for that! See that again! Oh, that was amazing! The Archer burst right at the start there, just to push away half of the forces while the Nimbus is able to get rid of that. Half of that, including the Iris. So now there's no cloaking left. The Nemesis are forced back somewhat, but most of the Gremlins are underwater. All but two. Actually... Oh, never mind, there's only like two in that force to begin with. All but two are underwater! So, nicely done with the Archer burst there! That easily saved Noel King from possibly dying, at least definitely taking a lot of damage. I mean, really, Noel King's use of tactics here... Granted, that was a bit of a lucky thing with the Archers, but still, Archers are good for that reason. The fact that they can do stuff like that is one of the big reasons archers are as powerful as they are and as useful as they are. So, good job you. Just kind of wish you'd reclaim. But otherwise, good job you. Actually, I just kind of wish you'd build another caretaker and then reclaim. But both work, actually. Now they got the overdrive. They don't have to reclaim. They do have a lot of static economy, though. They are building that up. And Crumbs isn't reclaiming either, so Noel King isn't that far behind. Still would recommend it as a way of getting an advantage, but... Yeah, at this point, it's not a huge deal. On the other hand, Crumbs going for the tank factory over in the northeast. That's an interesting place with the tank factory. Just kind of difficult to find the way through. As you can see here, the ta way the tanks have been pathing around here, it's a little bit hard for them to actually find the way out of that factory. So I don't quite understand the logic of placing where those placed. 
But not a bad idea at this stage in the game. The economy they have to get up a couple ogres, a couple minotaurs, use that as a main mainline push force, and a couple of the cobras. Or Ettons. Ettons now. The Ettons are a really good idea. I mean, the Nimbus, Nimbus Swarm is continuing to expand. That's the thing. Actually, it's... How many Nimbus are those? A group of five and a group of three. So, no, this is actually pretty sensible. This is actually very sensible. Get those Ettons up. Get the Ogres up as well. That'll also help a bit with the Nimbuses. And any ground forces will be completely wrecked. And on top of the Iris. Fortunately, no old fire, but that's fine. That honestly worked out. I mean, three Nimbuses go down. All five go down for free. And then the Ogre's able to tear apart all the ducks, and it's not like any of these forces have to get super close either. But I really like the fact that Crumbs is holding fire. I can't remember if it was... I think it was actually them I casted that... I can't remember exactly if it was them or not. But last time I casted a game at Anansonia, there was another player who went Cloaky Bot who went with the Iris. And that was a situation where they did not hold fire. And I kept going, oh, it would be so perfect that they held fire! But they never held fire! Oh, it was FFC, actually. But yeah, fire was never held, which meant that all these forces kept going through and dying because they kept getting revealed too soon. And actually, at this point, they're on fire at will, to come to think of it. Because that's the thing with cloaking, is that it doesn't really help if you're shooting. Because if you're shooting, then you're not cloaked. And if you're not cloaked, then there wasn't much point. You're wasting all the energy for nothing. Which actually is making crumbs as economy kind of start to stall a bit. They have two irises built up so far. And one of them takes 16 metal, or 16 energy per second on its own. So they got 32 energy per second going to irises. This is Null King's chance at this point. Null King has a much stronger production right now. Crumbs is going to be accessing metal hard. I mean, I think they just disabled one of the irises. No, they didn't. Ah, there it is. Wind generators have finally picked up the wind. So Crumbs' energy is in a good spot for now. But that's the thing. Crumbs' energy is entirely dependent on whether or not those wind generators keep running. On the other hand, they should have a large enough army and a powerful enough army that it won't matter. And the archers can't really do much against the large heavy tanks. So at this point, Crumbs should have the final push. It's coming down to the Stinger, and I think... No, the Iris, this isn't really going to work. Everything's just coming into range. Although the Nimbus is doing a fine job decloaking them to some extent. Now, it's gotten too close to the Stinger, gotten too close to the Commander. This should be game. No King's Commander taking a lot of damage. The explosion might kill the... No, it won't kill the future plan. It'll heavily damage the fusion plant, but it won't kill it. But well, the ogre is it gonna find Pert? Is it gonna find it? No! Yes! Just barely gets the fusion reactor. Take out the caretaker in the process. And also got rid of the commander. So Null King now with a very low energy income. Having lost their fusion reactor, that was the biggest thing. If Null King kept the fusion reactor, they would have been fine for production. They'd have not had storage, but they weren't using storage much anyway. But man. Ay. <sighs> Anyway, oh, hey, there's a, another request. Okay, cool. Of course, it's on CCR, but hey, there's a request. I actually already have two other games, so I'll do this one. I'll do the one in chat afterwards. Anyway, Crumbs, at this point, I mean, they've got the advantage production-wise. They've got the advantage economically, especially since Null King just lost all their energy economy. And they're spending a bunch of it on the, re on the repairs here. But... On the other hand, you know, they get a few solar plants, they should be okay. Or a few tidal generators. They should be okay. Of course, the downside is that this Revenant here, it's trying. It really is, but it's not going to get much damage in. Like, Null King at this point does not have much to work with, I'm afraid. They have a lot of base. They have a lot of expansions, a lot of metal. Not a lot of energy. But... That's the problem, is like, that now is... Ironically, now is not the time to reclaim. There was a time to reclaim, it's not now. Now is the time to build a power... Well, solar or wind or tidal or fusion or something. Now is the time to build power. Afterwards is the time to reclaim. Because, yeah, if you're accessing, it's never worth it. So anyway, Noel King... Yeah, pretty much just a matter of this one last push. Crumb's coming in here. Going for the finishing blow. I give Null King props for holding on as long as they did, especially given the amount of damage they took near the end. But it's just too much. And there's the G. There's the towel being thrown. So it is going to be... Oh. Well, that's it. Anyway, apparently this is more interesting than the CCR game that Dying Throne is talking about. 
Okay. Apparently high level meta is just boring. Oh. Okay. I mean, CCR is my least, or one of my least favorite maps for that exact reason. Not so much high level play is boring, but just CCR is kind of flat. There's not a whole lot you can do with it. Anyway, that was that. So the next match will not be on CCR. It is, in fact, going to be a match on Alien Desert. Okay, not much better. <laughs> Alien Desert. A 2v3. Another request. By I'm Not Null. And I... Yeah, I'll get to that in a sec. Just, I'm Not Null and Hydrus versus Happy Droid, Bilbo Baggins, and Null King. So we're going to see Null King again. Oh, Cyclops. Yeah. Yeah, see, the thing with Cyclops is that it's a tank. And the thing with tanks is they only really work on flat maps. Which means that the solution to me is to play hillier maps. But, I mean, who am I to talk? I like Trojan Hills a lot. More than I should. That map is unfeatured. So, yeah, that's... I don't necessarily have the most representative opinions or popular opinions. Wait, Wanderlust? Okay, never mind. Now, time for me pointing out that Cyclops is apparently the unit of choice on Wanderlust, which I will admit is not the hilliest map, but that is one of those maps I'd look to as being a hilly map, or a somewhat hilly map. It's a cliffy map. It's a Starcraft map, basically. Sort of like cliffs and ramps. Ravage is like that, too. I mean, Ravage is literally a Starcraft map, so that's another map that I like. But Trojan Hills isn't so much like that, but at the same time, yeah, that's still probably going to be a, a Cyclops map. Okay, good to know. So Cyclops is broken. Huh. Well, we'll see if we see that in the 2v3 next. Anyway, that is starting in... Well, a few minutes. Yeah, so... Stay tuned for that. It'll be interesting. It's, like I said, it's a 2v3. Don't get those a lot. So, see how that goes.